Welcome. Today we are going to work with hyperbolas centered at zero, zero. So first thing you need to know, if a hyperbola is centered at zero, zero, and it's in this form, x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals one. We're talking a horizontal opening. Now, a hyperbola has two lines that are called asymptotes. And the asymptotes might look like that. There you go, crisscrossing lines. And the, if it's a horizontal opening, it really hugs this and then it curves and does that, typically. So that would be a hyperbola. Or it might be a vertically opening one where it does this. They look quite, you know, a, a little bit different than a, a parabola. A little wider, a little different. Um, all right, so um, if it's opening horizontally, x fraction, the fraction with x in it is listed first in the subtraction. If it is opening vertically, the y over b, y squared over b squared fraction is listed first in the subtraction. The vertices, there's only one set of vertices. In this case, the vertices for the blue one here would be here and here. Obviously, there's your center. Your foci are somewhere around here. Um, all right. So the vertices are plus or minus a comma zero. F is found with a square root of a squared plus b squared. The foci are still in the same spot as the vertice. Now there's not two sets of vertices like the ellipse. So the foci is set in the same spot as the one set of vertices. So in this case, plus or minus f comma zero. And the, there's equations of asymptotes. These red lines are your asymptotes or asymptotic lines. And the asymptotes here, y equals plus or minus b over a times x. That's like the slope, right? It is the slope, b over a. It's not b squared over a squared, b over a. So those are the things I'm gonna ask you to find for each of these. Opening, which way it opens, horizontally or vertically, uh, the vertices, the foci, and the equation of the asymptotes. Over here, the big difference is the y is listed first, not the x. The vertices are in the y coordinate spot, so zero plus or minus b. Same way to find f, foci is zero comma plus or minus f, and the equation of asymptotes is the same as over here. So that's the equation. Here is the first example. So since x is listed first in the subtraction, it's opening horizontally. The vertices are going to be at plus or minus 2, square root of 4, 2 is a, 0. f is found by taking the square root of a squared plus b squared. So in this case, square root of 20. So f is 2 square root of 5. So foci is at plus or minus 2 square root of 5 comma 0. The equations of the asymptotes is y equals b, sorry, plus minus, I forgot the plus minus sign. Easy to do. b over a x. Now you really should simplify that. Plus minus 2x. 
And there are the basic four pieces of information you needed here. Give this one a try, see what you can do. When you're done, unpause. All right, so open vertically the vertices are going to be at 0 comma plus or minus 6 f is going to be the square root of third well it should be 16 first doesn't really matter uh, let's see that's 52 or 2 square roots of 13. So the foci is at 0 comma plus minus 2 square root 13. And the equations of the asymptotes, whoops, y equals plus minus, let's see, b, 6 over a, 4 x plus minus 3 halves x. There's your equation of the asymptotes. All right. What if it's not set in standard form? Well, make it in standard form. Divide by 64, because this side has to equal 1 x squared over 16 minus y squared over 4 equals 1. This is horizontal. The vertices are at plus minus 4, 0. f is the square root of 16 plus 4, or 20, which is 2 square root of 5. So foci are at plus minus 2 square root 5 comma 0 and the asymptotes y equals uh, plus minus 4 over 2 no, no, not 4 over 2 2 over 4 b over a I want to make sure I didn't make that mistake earlier no, I have that correct. This time, the 4 is under the y, and the 16 is under the x. Just double-checking myself, okay. Um, x plus minus 1 half x. All right, there is your standard form and the basic 4. Uh, on the homework, I think most of the, the ones where I ask you to find the standard form uh, don't require you to find the rest of it, but it was worth doing. Uh, divide by 25. Now when I simplify, this one comes out to 4y squared over 1 minus, hopefully I didn't put plus anywhere, minus x squared over 5 equals 1. I want this to be a 1 here and something else here. Well, if you remember, dividing um, is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 4 is 1 fourth. So this is the same as saying y squared over 1 fourth minus x squared over 5 equals 1. Because if I were to change this, so that they said y squared divided by 1 fourth, that's the same as y squared times the reciprocal 4 over 1. So therefore, if you have a whole number next to your variable and you want to move it to the bottom, take the reciprocal. So now I have my standard form, and if you wanted to, you could go through the process of finding all the basic information, like uh, vertical. Vertices at 0 plus minus. Now the square root of 1 fourth is 1 half. F is 
not so nice uh, square root of 5 plus 1 fourth, or let's see, 21 over 4. So f, oh, let's see, uh, foci is going to be 0, comma, plus, minus. Now, if I simplify, I get square root of 21 on top and the number 2 on bottom. And then the asymptote, um, let's see, that is going to take a little work. y equals plus minus b is a half over a, which is square root of 5. All right, not so simple. Um, well, let's see. First of all, I don't want square root of 5 in the bottom, and I don't like the 1 half on top. So that's the same as uh, 1 half times, let's see, the top times 1 over square root of 5. Uh, I want to multiply top and bottom by square root of 5. So I end up with y equals plus minus square root of 5 over 2 times 5 is 10 x. Not so nice, but that's the way it is. That's why I probably wouldn't give that one on as an actual assignment or on a quiz or test, but it's interesting to try. And what happens when I'm given vertices and foci and I have to find the equation? Well, I know that because the vertices are in the uh, x-coordinate spot, that the x squared has to be listed first in the subtraction. I also know that because it's 3, 3 squared is 9, so it's my a squared. I need to know what b squared is. Well, if f is 5, or square root of 25, that's going to equal the square root of a squared plus b squared, which we don't know. We're not trying to find b, we're just trying to find b squared. Well, what would I have to add to 9 to get 25? I'd need 16. And so that's what b squared has to be. And there's your equation in standard form. And that's it for today. Have a great day.